What's up, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Corey B. I want to talk about an open-ended prayer. Like, a prayer that doesn't end, right? Okay, so I learned about this concept when I was in a bend um, from a really great pastor. And the idea is just that we want to develop a closer relationship with God. Like, if you really, truly want to develop a closer relationship with God and have that connection with Him, like, okay, when you think about it when you're talking to your friends, right? Your closest of friends. Your homeboy comes over, y'all are talking, y'all are hanging out. Your conversation has a direction. It has a general flow to it. And at some point, there's a transition. Maybe there's a transition or maybe the conversation just ends. My boys come in here, my... Corey and Colton, my my little men, right? They come in here and we're talking about something and they got to go do something. They just kind of wrap up what they're saying and they walk off. They don't make this big, they don't announce that it's over. That's because of a, a closeness. Um, same thing with Kimberly. Kimberly, if she's going to leave or if I'm going to leave, we say bye, right? But if our conversation is just over, me and my wife aren't going to just have this, oh, okay, I'm done talking to you now, right? Because of a closeness of our relationship. Now, see, the thing is, is we think about God so differently. We don't look at him as our father far, far too often. And ultimately what we do is we put this barrier between us that we're slowing down the growth and the natural progression of our relationship. This is an interesting concept to wrap your head around because we don't see God in front of us. I remember uh, a buddy was talking to me. Um, he was trying to help me with my daughter, Mariah, when she was a teenager and she was struggling with, you know, just different things. All teenagers struggle with things, right? And so he was like, he was like, you know what you need to do, Mariah? He was like, you need to just grab a chair. He's like, pull this chair from your desk over here. And he's like, just have a seat on your bed, pull the desk chair up in front of you and just talk to God as if he's sitting in that chair. And it'll help you connect with them and kind of work through your issues and stuff. See, now this concept, if you start at a young age, this concept's incredible. But it's not that it can't work when you're older. But the idea is that you should have an unending prayer with God. You should have an open dialogue. So like today, Kimberly was leaving this morning. And as she was leaving, me and her... We're talking about our day. We're talking about the things that we, the, the things I need to accomplish. Uh, she's got to go to work today. She's working a shift out in Buffalo. And as she's working her shift out there, um, she's like, well, there's a couple of things she's going to try to accomplish, you know, when she has some downtime or she has a break or whatever. But ultimately, she's got a long day. So I tried, we try to talk about the things that I need to accomplish today, not just in my business, but helping the boys and just you know, a couple has things they got to get done. And if one, and if she has to go to work and she can't handle certain things, I've got to try to be able to facilitate those things for her while I'm here. Because she's, when she gets off, it's going to be after business hours. So it's not a whole lot she can really do. Okay. So we were talking about the things that we need to get done today. And we were just talking and we were like, Hey, you know, we got to pray for each other today. Just help each other get through the day. And that's something we, we're always praying for each other. We pray for each other every day. But as she was driving away, I was talking to God and I was like, you know, God, you know, keep Kimberly safe while she's driving and, you know, be with her today. I pray for her patience, um, that she's able to, you know, be a good support and that they're able to, you know, like I, I prayed for my wife. I prayed for my wife and I prayed for her patience and I prayed for the facility that she's working at. I prayed for myself and my boys today as we get through things. I didn't say amen. I didn't say amen. Um, I just prayed and then I walked in the house and like I found myself, I was in the living room literally just moments ago and I was working on some laundry and I was like, God, you know, I'm so thankful for where things are at and where things are going. And as I was thanking him, I was like doing laundry. But people think like that they got to stop and pray and you do, you should at some point stop and pray because you should essentially meditate in your prayer with him where you Close off everything around you. There's no noise. There's no distractions. You have no thoughts about anything else. You're just in fellowship with God. 
But that doesn't mean when you're not in that deep meditation, that deep prayer, that deep focus with him, you shouldn't have dialogue with him constantly. And if you have that open dialogue with him constantly, then ultimately what you're going to see is you're going to develop a closer relationship with him where you just desire knowing him more like you do with your brother or your sister or your spouse um, or your best buddy, you know? There's, there's a, a desire that you need to have and that desire comes from that open dialogue by you just constantly communicating with him. And if you do that, it could, it could be real simple. Like me, I, I uh, have a regular meeting each week with my boy Garrett, my partner, back in Texas as we're growing and developing our business and stuff like that. And as we're making plans for future ventures, like we have a running meeting every week. And before that meeting, I pray in the morning. I pray before I get on the phone. While we're on the phone, sometimes a prayer needs to be said. And when we get off the phone, I say another prayer. And it's kind of like sometimes just out of habit because we were raised up that way. I say amen. But a lot of times I don't need to. I just like, you know, God, just be with me. God, thank you. Give me the words I need to say. Lord, speak with me. Help me facilitate this meeting. Help me be a good support. Help me help us to, you know, have that feedback back and forth where we can grow and develop. Lord, lead us. Lord, be with us. Give us the wisdom and the insight. And, you know, then afterwards, I'm like, Lord, thank you. Uh, I feel like we really connected and I know your presence was there. I could feel it. Like just having that dialogue. It seems like such a simple, simple thing, but it's a thing that's so far, far too often just overlooked. And um, I've been begun teaching the boys. See, I didn't understand. This. When I was growing up, when I was a kid, I almost didn't know how to pray. I was like, you know, I said my prayers at bedtime. I said my prayers at dinner, but we had a standard prayer. We had a prayer that you said these words. And so if you said those words and you know, it's like, um, I remember one time uh, we had been saying a prayer for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden my mom was like, hey, I've got this other prayer that we should say. And so we're going to pray this prayer that we've been saying. We're going to say this prayer and we're going to, and then we're going to do, we call them bless you's. We took turns each night. One of us would either me, my brother or sister each night we would be like, okay, I want to bless mom. I want to bless dad. I want to bless grandma. I want to bless grandpa. I want to bless. You know, we'd list the people that we were thinking about that we were like, Lord, bless them. Lord, be with them. You know, and that was just our little thing that we did, right? I've been doing that with the boys. But I remember thinking that when my mom came up with that second prayer, I felt like almost weird. I was like, mom, this, your prayer is kind of weird. It, it It's different words, right? I mean, that was just my mentality. And I remember thinking, I kind of hurt my mom's feelings I don't think she was really hurt, but I think she kind of expressed to me a little bit. And she was just like, well, why would you say my prayer is weird? But, you know, I was just growing up. I just didn't, I just, I didn't get it. Like I, to me, prayer was this structure. And if it lost that structure, I didn't know what to do. And I remember growing up and when I became a teenager and stuff and I'd go to church, I went to different churches and my mom let me explore some different things. And I remember even when I was younger, Going to a Baptist church, I was like, man, these people know how to pray. I was like, uh, when the pastor would pray at the end of service, I, he just knew that. One of the elders, you know, they'd come up and speak over the congregation and say a prayer for everybody before they let out the service. And I was just like, man, they know how to pray. How do they know what to say? I didn't know what to say. And so when it was when I got older and I was like, okay, I got to pray. I was like, I to pray. It took me years before I become comfortable. And it's like. I've been really working with my boys because they're so young still and so impressionable. And I want them to develop that relationship that it took me a lifetime to develop with God. I mean, I'm still growing. And I think no matter, even if you've been a strong Christian since you were a little child, I think everybody needs to keep growing. Ultimately, that relationship needs to grow and get tighter and deeper all the time anyways. But I feel like I just learned some things in the last you know, 15 years, in the last 10 years, and in the last two years, I've been learning even more. And it's just like, God's just speaking to me on a level. And I know that me being open and being willing to put myself out there, and that's what you got to do. That's what you, you got to get rid of that whole comfort zone. Like You don't need to be comfortable with God. God says, come as you are. And God also He's omnipresent. So even when you're awkward and uncomfortable and you're doing something you shouldn't 
be doing. He's right there with you. He sees you. He knows. He hears your thoughts always. So just get comfortable. Just settle in and say, God, let's wrap. That's it. Just let's, let's wrap. Lord, this is what I'm feeling right now. Uh, you know, I miss my mom today. I miss my mom. My heart's hurting. I don't know. Like I sometimes pray to God and I tell God, I'm like, God, let my mom know I love her. That almost seems like a weird thing to say out loud to like, to you or to people. But I do. I mean, I literally, Lord, let mom know I love her. Lord, Kimberly's at work. She's working 12 hours. I miss her so much. Just let her feel it in her heart right now. That I'm thinking about him and I love her. Lord, be with my boys. Protect them all day long. Protect their hearts. Protect their mind. Don't let that frustration well up inside them. Corey, Corey has a little bit of a, a fuse like, like me and like his mama. Um, Colton, not as much, but Corey, things tend to irritate him or frustrate him or get him bothered. Um, mostly his brother. <laughs> But I just, you know, I pray for him every day. I'm like, God, just be with Cor today. Just keep his heart peaceful. I mean, he's so joyful, but he's uh, he's kind of like volatile, you know? It's like not like an angry temper, but he just, he gets frustrated. He gets bothered. And it seemed to be just like, oh, why? You know, and then like 10 minutes later, he's just like, oh, let me show you this. And he's like so overjoyed. Like he's such a roller coaster of emotions. And I think lots of kids are that way, but... Corey and Colton are so close, and Colton just doesn't seem like such of a roller coaster. He's more mellow. Um, he's more, I mean, he gets excited. He gets frustrated. He gets all those emotions, but it just doesn't seem like it goes from one spectrum to the other so quickly. And so um, I always say little prayers for Corey. I always say little prayers for Colton and little prayers for my, I got grandbabies. I got three of them. I say little prayers for them all the time, and sometimes that's it. That's all it is. I'm like, hey, Lord, this is on my heart, you know? Be with little Dino, like my little Dean, my little, my little man growing up, man. He's in, he's in school now, and he's just, you know, Lord, be with him today. Let him have an awesome day. And I don't, I don't close it with amen because I'm just like, I'm just rapping with my Lord and talking to my father, asking him to be there. You know, when you call your dad up, I mean, if you call him, that's one thing. Of course, you're going to say goodbye before you get off the phone. It's just like standard etiquette. But uh, some people don't even do that. They just, all right, Dad, I was just calling. I uh, asked you to take care of this for me. Uh, okay, love you, man. And then just hang up the phone. You know, so it's like, I've literally, uh, you know, I've heard some people that they have that, you know. But it's like I said, most people say goodbye just because of it's, it's etiquette. Uh, it's like taught to us. It's ingrained in us. Amen is ingrained in us. But it's like the people you're closest to and you feel so comfortable. Sometimes it's not even necessary, you know. Who should you have a closer relationship with than God? You've known him longer than anyone. He's known you since before you were you. So, um, yeah, I feel like I went on a little bit today. And I, I, I intended when I first started recording this video that it was going to be like, ah, it's going to be a quick like little five minute video. But I just kind of felt like I just had some things to say. So anyways, I hope this helps you. I hope this speaks to you. Uh, like I said, just Try it out today and see how it goes. And um, yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. Lord, I'm going into work today. Lord, be with me. Help me have a blessed day. Things start getting a little hairy at work. Lord, come on, be with me. Help me out. Give me some peace. Give me some comfort. Things are going really great. Man, Lord, thank you. This day is rocking. All right, back to work. You know, it's like, yeah, you don't have to close it off. And then when you get off work, Lord, thanks. This day, whew. thanks this day is over. Whew. Or thanks for bringing me through this day. Or thanks for, I don't know, just whatever it is. All right. Y'all share this with someone because we all need this. We all need to help each other. We all need to lift each other up. And we all need to remind each other to be in prayer constantly and just have that open relationship with you, Lord. All right. Got nothing but love for y'all. Hope y'all have a blessed day. I pray for y'all. All right, y'all be sure to share it, like it, subscribe, ding that bell. Till next time, I'm out.